Hi, this is a conversation with Andrew Bernstein, who is a professor of philosophy and also author of the Capitalist Manifesto. Andrew, um, one of the main concerns when one is discussing with people who do not fully understand capitalism is, uh, well, education is important. It sure uh, is. Right? Right. <laughs> yes. Uh, but who will provide education for the poor if the government is not? Well, I know in, in the United States that uh, uh, people are taxed to pay for the, for the government schools and consequently very often they, they can't afford to pay f uh, twice for education. They can't afford to send their, their children to, to private schools. So if we abolish the government school system, as I think we should, then I think we also need to abolish the taxes that fund it. The income taxes, the property taxes, the sales taxes, which gives the poor more money to, uh, to, to spend on their education and, 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 and greater ability to send their children to private schools. But also don't forget, a lot of children are homeschooled. It's not that difficult to teach your child to, to, to read or write. In fact, it's very simple. The first thing you do is you, know, you, you, you read to the child and, 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 and show him or her that there's things in books that's really interesting. The child's motivated. At age four or five, he's, he's ready to learn how to read, use phonics. There's only 26 letters in the alphabet. It's a very small number of sounds. You could, teach, you could literally teach a, four, a motivated four or five-year-old child to, to, to read in, in two weeks. Uh, so it's, it's, it's actually very simple to uh, educate children. Reading is, is, should be as natural as riding a bike, eating, or even breathing. It shouldn't be this tortuous process that the government schools have turned it into. So I think on a free market, on a free market of education, uh, poor people have, have, have numerous options. And historically, we, we've seen that, that poor people, pay, motivated parents have done very well. I mean, poor, poor parents have done very well educating, educating their own children much better than the government school, schools do. We've seen that historically. I know it's true in the United States. I know it's true in England. I think it's true in other parts of the world, too. Uh, there, there, there are experiences in um, India, for example, that prefer, people prefer to send their children to small, very humble private schools yeah. than to the, to the state schools. Uh, so that should be, show the evidence that uh, right. public schools are Right, are I think that's, that's a good example, Luis. And also, you know, m remember Marva Collins in Chicago? She, you're a black woman. She left the government schools because she was frustrated at the, at the bureaucracy. She started a small school in her own house with a handful of, handful of students. Uh, and, and she, you know, is ed educating so, some, of the, some of the black kids in the Chicago slums that the government schools thought were un unteachable. And she, uh, you know, she, she, she uh, cr created a number or helped, helped create the, a number of outstanding students at her school at Westside Prep, these kids, you know, in, uh, in very inexpensive uh, private education designed for, for poor kids. Uh, a lot of those kids excelled. I mean, they became you know, outstanding academic students. Now, it's kind of evident why in terms of economics, and why in practical terms um, state schools are um, not appropriate, um, are not efficient, are waste. Yes. Uh, you, 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 can do, you can do a list. Let's go to the philosophical reasons of why is it that state schools are a bad idea. Well, you know, you know euphemistically they're, they're re called public schools which is a mis that's, that's not a good name. Any private school is open to the public, as is any private business. They're government schools, and government is, a, is an agency of coercion. So, you know, the, the, the taxpayers are, are, are forced to fund these schools, whether they have children that go there or not. The children are dragged into the schools, you know, in the United States in, 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 until age 16. They're an agency of, of coercion, as such. They're, they're anti-mind, whereas on, on a free market, what you see, especially, especially you know, in the United States, as I, and I've researched this, I know there were no government schools prior to the mid-19th century. So in revolutionary America, and colonial America, in the early 19th century, all education was, was privately done. And as you expect on a free market, just as if you have a free market of food, there's going to be thousands of different kinds of restaurants and supermarkets with food that you can, you can make at home. 
Similarly, uh, on a free market of education, there were schools of every, there was there were schools of every type in the United States. There were tutors who you know who who, who offered their services in every in every every topic of, uh, 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 known to man. There were small schools you know that, that a lot of people sent their kids to. There were there were there were there were larger schools. Uh, you know, the, a lot a lot of kids were taught to read and write at home by by mom and dad. So you know, under freedom, you get this plethora, this enormous wealth of, of differences that of different types of schools that parents and their children uh, can choose between whereas with the government with the government institution you get you get only what the government hands you and the government and, and I think a, a key part of the reason here is the government uh, since, since it, it, it gets money and quote customers by force they don't have any economic incentive to excel they don't have to give a good education uh, they got they got to drag people in and money and money by force but on a free market of education parents and 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 and, and the kids are going to go to the schools that get, get results that where, 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 where you get academic results they have an economic incentive to excel you know, uh, uh, private schools on a, on a free market open to competition so that's one important reason why the, why the private private education free market education is va cognitively academic vastly superior to government schools. Now this takes us to the politics of state schools. Don't they contribute to the melting pot? Do they contribute to, to the melting pot? Uh, I think they contribute to illiteracy. They, they certainly contribute to very low levels of education, but uh, 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 they contribute to very low levels of knowledge. But melting pot, by, by that, I think that, that means People from, from different cultures come into a, come into a country, they're, in, they're integrated, they bring in their own customs and knowledge, gets integrated into the broader culture, they become part of, part of, that, uh, part of that culture. I think you know, the, the private, private education would, 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 contribute, would contribute to the, to the melting pot. For, for example, uh, private schools, say in the United States, run by immigrants, can specialize in, in teaching in teaching some of the, the the knowledge, the customs, the history, the religion uh, uh, of that country, and people people can can learn you know could go to go to this could that school to, to learn to learn about it. I think melting pot means the assimilation of different different cultures and and, that, and various aspects of different cultures. That's not contributed to by 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 churning out a bunch of illiterates, which is, the, uh, which is what the government schools do. The way, the way you learn about different cultures is by becoming literate, and then, and then, and then you can read, and, and also be, be become fluent in different languages. Uh, and th that's, the way you become, uh, that's the way you become fluent with other cultures, and, and you generate a melting pot through education, not through, not through the generation of illiteracy and ignorance, which is what the government schools specialize in. What about the role of state schools in um spreading and uh, developing the prevailing ideas in a society. Uh, why is that role important? They do generate, they do spread the prevailing ideas. That's part of their evil. They're, uh, let's put it this way. The government controls the schools and the government ultimately decides what's going to be taught. In a dictatorship, the, whether it was Nazi Germany or, or, or the Soviet Union or any, any communist country, the government, the, the government is, is, is exercises strict censorship. You know, in the communist countries, for example, they, they teach Marxism, they teach about socialism, they don't teach the, the virtues of capitalism. That, the, you, 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 that can't be taught. They'll, they, they, they'll burn the books, they might, they might kill you, for, you know, they won't they'll send you to a, a slave labor camp for, for doing that. Uh, the government in, in, a, in a mixed economy is, is the, the, uh, the, the Board of Education is, control, is, is the seat of all this, this pressure group warfare. This pressure group wants to control the school and, and teach creationism. This, this pressure group, no, 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 we, have to, we, have, we teach evolution. This pressure group wants to use phonics to, to teach reading. This, this one wants to use luxe or whole language or, or whatever it is. Whoever controls the, the, the Board of Education dictates what, what's going to be taught to the, to the students. You're not necessarily going to hear all sides of it. But on a free market of education, all types of schools uh, you know, will, will flourish. You'll get religious schools that teach creationism and not evolution. You'll get secular schools that teach ev evolution, not creationism. You'll get uh, diverse schools of, you know, schools of more variety that, that'll teach both side by side. Uh, the, the curriculum gets decided by the, by the headmaster or whoever 
that owns the school, and the parents and the, and the students uh, can judge which, which schools are best for them. So what proliferates is, is, a, is, is intellectual diversity, which you don't find under the government schools. It's very stifled and very limited to what the government thinks the kids should learn. Intellectual diversity requires freedom of thought and is fostered by, by private education and the multiple different approaches and different theories that are taught in, 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 different, in different private schools. Now, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, average Latin American watching TV, watching an American US series or, 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 or movie, and, and they see these uh, beautiful schools with uh, equipment, with professors and, uh, you know, what I mean, and also um, relatives of Guatemalans who have migrated to the US, and, and they tell their people here, uh, schools are free, uh, they have equipment, and uh, children learn stuff. <laughs> what can we tell them about the reality of state education in the US and the develop developed world when, when they see these differences, comparing their schools to our schools here? Right, well, things, things are relative, right? I mean, uh, the, the government schools in the United States are possibly better than the schools in, in Guatemala or in, in, in other countries that, that are not as technologically and industrially developed as the United States. That's certainly possible. Uh, but relative to, to the private schools and what education could be and should be in a, in a, in a free society, the U.S. government schools are very poor. The U.S., not that they lack money, the taxpayers are, <laughs> are taxed endlessly to, to supply money. I mean, they're, they're poor in performance. They're, they're, they, they don't, they don't this, I, as a college professor, I see how many uh, American high school graduates know very little and, and in some cases, sad to say, are, 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 bare, are barely literate. So we, we, could, we could point out that yes, the, the, the things are relative. The American government schools in the U.S. may be, may be better than the schools in, in, in some countries around the world, but compared to private education in the United States and compared to what private education was in the past in the United States prior to the imposition of government schools and what it might be again if we abolish the government schools and get the tremendous proliferation and diversity and variety in the marketplace uh, in education that we see, say, in, in, in a free marketplace of, of food, in a free marketplace of cell phones, in a free marketplace of CD players, in a free marketplace of writing novels or, 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 or singing, you know, writing songs and, and recording music. You see this tremendous diversity. You have in music, you have in a, in a free market of music, you have rock, you have rap, you have opera, you have classical, you have this tremendous diversity. This is what a free market in education will, will, will be. The, the, the educational results and the literacy levels will be vastly higher than what the contemporary U.S. government schools do. Andrew, thank you very much for sharing these ideas with us. And thank you too. Thank you, Luis. Good to be here.